Hello everyone, welcome to session 6 of LTech 623. I want to start out by saying how much I enjoyed the poems you created for Critical Reflection 5. Thank you for diving right in and having fun with Wii Video. Honestly, your submissions were a real joy to watch. There was some high quality audio, and it's obvious that everyone practiced pairing spoken words with relevant visual information using various background images and stock footage. In short, I appreciate the energy and the output. Well done all. With that in mind, there's a few basic features within Wii Video that I want to point out to all of you. The first one has to do with creating a new video project. In case you didn't notice, Wii Video comes with a number of pre-configured templates that you can take advantage of. These templates contain a number of useful elements all ready to use, including customized titles, video, and transitions. These templates can save you a lot of time and help ensure that your video productions have a unified look. Of course, you can modify the existing templates and even build your own for later on. Another important aspect of Wii Video is telling it whether you want to edit your video project in storyboard mode or timeline mode. This is called the editing mode and it's located under every video project settings menu. You're welcome to check out both modes, but for projects in this class, everyone should learn to use timeline mode, which gives you much more granular control in terms of editing video. Another feature within Wii Video has to do with setting a project's format. Basically, there are three formats to choose from. A horizontal orientation with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, a vertical orientation with a 9 by 16 aspect ratio, and a square layout with a 1 to 1 aspect ratio. In this class, we'll be sticking to the horizontal format, as that is the most common. Now, if you're in timeline mode, another key detail of using Wii Video is knowing how to add and remove audio points. So, as you can see in the screen capture here, it's pretty easy to add fade-ins and fade-outs to your audio tracks. You can also use the slider to adjust the volume. If you want to have additional audio points, however, all you have to do is click on the audio line, which will insert another audio point that you can move up and down. This allows you to have multi-step audio fades, which can be useful in different situations. Note that if you don't want the additional audio points for some reason, simply click Undo to get rid of them. Now, when you have images or videos on your timeline, it is really easy to add effects. Simply make sure a clip is selected and then click on the FX button in the pop-up window. This will bring up a modal window that contains various visual effects that you can apply to the selected clip or all of the clips in the track. These are pretty basic effects, but they can be useful in certain circumstances. Perhaps more importantly, another way to alter your clips is to go into the editing menu. To do that, select a clip and click on the pencil icon. This will give you a number of options related to transforming, cropping, animating, and color correcting and keying your video clips. Also notice you can overlay a grid on top of your clip to help you focus on alignment and the placement of various content. Just click the Show Grid checkbox in the upper right hand corner to toggle the grid overlay. Also, you may want to apply the Blur Background effect. This is useful when you have an image or a clip that's smaller than the video's canvas. As you can see, this effect tries to fill in the background to offset the fact that the clip doesn't fill up the whole video frame. This feels a bit more polished from the viewer's point of view compared to big black bars on the side of your video. Finally, I want to point you to Wii Video Academy. This is an online collection of how-to videos created by Wii Video, and they're designed to help its users get to know the platform. So be sure to check out Wii Video Academy to learn some of the ins and outs of using this platform. Okay. So now I want to take a look at the path ahead for us this semester. So far, we've taken the first five weeks of the course to get oriented to a number of important dimensions of creating effective instructional videos. 
And now that we have this foundation, it's time for us to begin focusing on creating our, our own original videos. Now, don't worry, we still have a lot more to cover related to learning how to shoot and edit high quality video. But I just want to give you a preview of where we're headed. On this slide, you can see that starting this week, we're going to begin our first video production project. This will be one of three projects we'll complete this semester. So let's break down the process we're going to follow to produce each video project. As you can see, each project involves four main phases. The first phase, which we're going to start this week, is pre-production. Pre-production refers to the planning process. It's all about thinking through the details of your video production in advance before the actual hands-on work begins. In this class, a lot of this phase is going to involve script writing and storyboarding. The second phase of the production process is going to focus on production itself. In other words, collecting and or shooting the raw video footage specified in our scripts and storyboards. This is going to involve thinking about lighting, the rule of thirds, audio quality, and many of the other applied media aesthetics we're slowly learning about. After the second week, we'll enter into post-production. And this is the phase where we'll process all the raw material we've gathered during production. In other words, we'll focus on all of the tasks that must be completed after filming ends. This includes editing the raw footage into scenes, inserting transitions, adding titles, so on and so forth. At the end of the post-production phase, we'll have final products that we can export and share with the rest of the class. And finally, the last phase of our production process is reflection. During this phase, we'll think about what went well and what could be improved regarding our video productions. This will involve watching classmates' videos and giving feedback related to each video's overall quality as assessed through the independent dimensions of video. Okay, to end today's video, I want to talk a little bit about the parameters of Production Project 1. The goal of this assignment is to produce an original, high-quality educational video in the chalk and talk style. Now, this will involve filming our hands, demonstrating or modeling some sort of skill. It will also emphasize presenting information in a concise and compelling manner. In terms of length, there's some flexibility here, but I would encourage you to keep your video under six minutes in length. The topic of your video is entirely up to you. The idea is that you are the authority demonstrating or modeling some kind of skill. Any topic will do. For some inspiration, you might consider filming yourself creating origami, cooking, drawing, or doing card tricks. Really anything that involves filming your hands. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for this week. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.